Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and today we're talking about the COVID-19 virus and a blind spot that I think a lot of preppers might be missing when it comes to protecting themselves and their families. As early as just this morning, I heard that the CDC actually issued a, a really like a YouTube prepper channel sounding warning to everyone in the country that we need to prepare for the inevitability of the COVID-19, they're not using the word pandemic, I don't think, but pandemic sweeping across the country. And we need to get ready for the measures that are going to be implemented in order to try to control that as best as is possible. As preppers, that's not something that's really, uh, that's not news to us. We've been preparing for this type of thing for a while. But there is one thing that I uh, was mentioning that's kind of like a blind spot to I think a lot of people, especially people uh, who are into preparedness and live in a rural setting where you get stuff delivered to your, uh, delivered to yourself through the mail as opposed to you know always going out to a store to buy this, that, and the other thing. Uh, Obviously, it's kind of a black box when something gets delivered to you, and I don't mean that literally, I mean that figuratively. You, you'll have a box sitting on your porch, and you really don't know whose hands touch that. <laughs> whose hands touch that, the, the health state of the person attached to those hands that touch that. Uh, and it really makes a lot of sense to take some precautions when you're receiving deliveries uh, directly into your house. I just had some deliveries uh, you know, delivered about 20 minutes ago. It actually prompted the idea that I should do this video uh, to share you know, some of these ideas with you guys just to make sure that everybody's taking the precautions that make sense. And the first one is if you get stuff delivered to your doorstep, is to leave it there for a little while. Obviously, the person... Uh, brought that up to your doorstep. You don't necessarily know the health state of them. They could have been coughing, maybe they weren't coughing, but it makes a lot of sense just let the air clear in that area. Just let it sit out there for five or 10 minutes, unless it's raining and you're worried that it's gonna get you know destroyed or something. Let it sit out there, let mother Na nature do what she does for free for you and dissipate a lot of those uh, you know particles that might've come up you know if the person was coughing or anything like that. Uh, the next thing you need to do, again, is still don't bring it in. You need to prepare an area where you're going to receive it. Uh, whatever is out there you should consider to be contaminated. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but it's safe to presume that it may be. You know, we're going to deal with it as though it is contaminated. You want to have an area that is easy to clean up. You don't want to bring in packages and have like, you know, your sweater on the table and, you know, your food that you're going to be eating later. You want to have a cleared, prepared area with whatever tools you need so you're going to bring it in and not be going rummaging through a bunch of cabinets and things like that because maybe you need a knife to open it up or you need some cleaners to, to wipe the thing down or whatever you might need. You want it all here because as soon as your hands touch the package, your hands are the hot zone. <laughs> so you want to consider uh, your hands to be contaminated and you don't want them to be spreading all, all over the place. Incidentally, I did already bring in the packages. They're right down here. And I did clean my hands after I did that. I also cleaned the doorknobs after I did that. So let's say we've got the packages in, we have our cleared area, and I have some items that are ready to go. I have a rag for wiping things down. I wanted to show this to you. This isn't what I'm going to be using today, but these are Clorox wipes. These do not have bleach in them, but there are uh, Clorox wipes that have bleach. It doesn't have to be Clorox. It could be anything, but there are easy wipes that you can just pop open and, you know, you pull one out. I use these in the car a lot, but if you're in a, a cold environment and you bring these around in the car, they do have water in them, and if it's cold, they'll freeze into a rock. So you may want to uh, consider that before you bring these out into the cold with you, maybe leaving them in your car, is this thing will turn into a brick uh, and, and you won't be able to get any off. I just wanted to share that with you guys, but that's not what we're going to be using today because these are convenient. Uh, they're really easy to pull them out, but uh, you know they cost money and you know there's a limited supply. This cloth I'm going to be using is infinitely reusable and we're going to be using bleach. This is a bleach solution that I mixed up. It's uh, about half bleach, half water. Uh, and it's just using a regular commercial bleach. You can still buy commercial bleach. The CDC, like I said, issued a warning. People need to get ready, prepare, get supplies and things. But as of today, there was still bleach on the shelf. I was just at the hardware store. And, you know, aside from the fact that there's a, there's a run on the iconic N95 respirator masks, a lot of the other supplies, people just aren't thinking about it because they don't see it. They don't see the imagery all the time. And people aren't thinking that next step ahead. But as preppers, that's what we're supposed to be doing. So, Thinking that step ahead, I got my work area prepared. I even have a knife ready to go because you're oftentimes using a knife to get into packages. And I've got two of them here. One of them is a figurative black box. It's a brown box, but I don't know what's in there. And uh, we're going to go into this one first. The next one actually has something interesting that I think you guys might 
be into maybe getting for yourself. I'll share you, uh, that one with you after we get into this guy. So I brought the box up here. The countertop now is hot. It's infected, presumably. Uh, I'm going to take my knife and, you know, I... Some people might be thinking, why am I not wearing a respirator? That's something I could do if the environment gets you know, more intense uh, and I have a real reason to believe that this is definitely uh, you know, a contagious uh, item here. Uh, you know, I, I would probably be doing respirators. At this point, it is, you know, I don't think we're to that degree yet, but I'm still kind of taking these precautions, kind of a practice, and it's easy to add the respirator on later when the situation gets more, more realsies. All right, so I'm going to cut in here, taking great care not to cut myself because that would be creating a, a site for infection. If there's any kind of particles or anything in here, I don't want to be stirring them up. And what is in here is another layer of stuff that was touched by people at an Amazon shipping facility. What I've got in here is hand sanitizer, actually. So we're going to take this dirty box and put it inside of that dirty box. I just realized that my watch might have been a good thing to have removed before I started doing this too. I'm just getting, you know, getting some practice with this as well, but I want to share with you what I've been doing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, the inside of this box is probably not contaminated because these guys were probably packaged quite a while ago, but I'm gonna presume that what's inside here is contaminated. My knife is definitely contaminated. I'm just gonna put that right down in here inside the box. This towel is now contaminated, and now so too is the outside of this container. Not the inside, because it has bleach water. So I'm going to get some bleach water on here. All right, and I can definitely smell it. This is active bleach water. And what I've got is dirty area, and over here is going to be clean area. So I'm going to take each one of these out, kind of wipe it all down. I can smell the bleach. Here we go. It smells like a pool. All right. And I'm going to kind of hit my hands here, too. Fingertips. All right. And that's one. And put a little more bleach on there. And we're going to do the second one. Might make sense to fast forward through this part. Okay, we got those all cleaned. So now I have a dirty knife, which I can put on my dirty counter, and I've got these boxes. Now, uh, if you live in an area, okay, well, I'm going to phrase it a different way. I live in an area where I use wood to heat my home. Uh, you know, this is kind of a normal house, but it also has a wood stove. Uh, so I can burn these guys. So I'm going to place them back down on the dirty floor. And the next place these guys are going to uh, head is straight down. And I've got a fire going right now. They're going to go right down, be incinerated right there. If you don't have that, you need to have a trash bag or whatever, you know, you would you know, used to keep cardboard boxes for recycling or whatever, but you want it to be able to contain them, consider them dirty, and uh, paper, you know, it, it's kind of hard to bleach through paper. It's just going to turn into mush on you. So, I mean, put them inside something, consider them to be contaminated, but keep them in a s secure area that's away from everywhere else because those boxes are not clean. Now, here's the other item that I bought, and I'm going to open this up. This is something I picked up. Uh, it's just about a hundred dollars and it is a UV sanitizer which I can use for small items. So if there's something I'm bringing into the house, say like a knife or something, now the knife is pretty easy to wipe down with bleach, just put it into a bleach bath. But there are other things like an N95 mask or something like that, that I may want to just kind of pop. It's like almost like a toaster oven uh, and it just bathes it in UV light. Uh, and you know, there are certain things that work better with UV light and if you can put them in there, uh, you know, it's a great way of just sanitizing things like anything made out of paper or anything like that, your, you know, your wallet, all that kind of stuff. You can lay it in there and it's, some things are less appropriate for doing with bleach. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm not going to open this thing up right now. I'm going to do that in a separate video. I'll do a review for this uh, if you guys are interested in something like this. But for now, I just wanted to share with you the idea of whenever something is coming into your home, you know, we have all these defenses. We have the idea of, you know, uh, you, you know, you live maybe remotely, you have like a you know, bug out location or whatever. But, uh, you know, if you just 
if you're ordering stuff and it's just coming into your home, you might be just inviting virus, not even just necessarily COVID-19, but anything uh, into your home. And it's kind of a blind spot for a lot of people because I, I think um, you, you associate other people with uh, you know possible contagion. But when you just have delightful little wonderful packages sitting on your doorstep when you get home, you know, we all have warm fuzzy feelings uh, in relation to that. And you don't necessarily look at those wonderful packages waiting for you and think, stay back <laughs> until I bleached you. So that's it. I hope this is, uh, you know, is helpful to you. Stay safe. You know, keep vigilant. Uh, this is something that looks like it is going to happen, but we're all going to make it through it. Or the vast majority of us will make it through it, uh, especially if we take a few precautions and, uh, you know, just uh, avoid inviting disaster into your home. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.